Hey guys and welcome to Board Now's television reviews and on this video I finally return to GLOW and it's going to be GLOW Season 3 Episode 4 the title of the episode is called Say Yes and that's in reference to a song at the end of the episode which is being performed by this drag artist who um, the characters go and visit her club and see her perform and she has an interesting part in the episode in terms of sort of commentary and, and just what the interaction she has with the characters and the impact quite an interesting little character and I think her sort of performance and her you know that kind of performer and <clears throat> identity and all the rest of it is is quite quite an interesting little compare contrast with with the women of wrestling and particularly during this era so I'll talk more about that but but she's quite an interesting character and in what in the impact she has on the episode so yeah I'll, I'll get into it this is of course the netflix series into the third season now season um episode four as i said and one of the big plots is that ruth's boyfriend russell the cameraman who she started seeing at the end of season two he comes for a visit he visits ruth in vegas they've obviously pardon been apart for a while now and so they spend the weekend together and they've they've been having kind of issues because obviously it's a long distance relationship so they've been talking over the phone and this episode shows them you know how difficult that is because then when you actually meet up and you know some sometimes you're in very different places having not seen each other for a while and it's an interesting episode for Russell because he's the sort of character it's quite easy to dismiss as just, you know, a, a bit bit of a prick, really. Uh, you know, like he, he doesn't care. Um, but it's actually quite balanced in how it, how it deals with him. Certainly he comes across as, as quite sort of jerky at times. He comes across as a bit too casual, like he, he's not really not really there for sort of Ruth. But I mean, as the episode goes on, we do see actually he's a pretty decent guy. We see that there are issues with the relationship just because of the long distance thing. And yeah, it is balanced in that, you know, it, it doesn't totally demonise him, or at least I don't think so, but... I think we are meant to think, you know, does the relationship have a future? Might something happen with Saba Ruth, which obviously Ruth has has so far rejected. The opening scene of the episode is that is actually really cool because we see um, Russell and Ruth in their room. Um, yeah, it's funny they went with with a boyfriend with a name beginning with a her as well. But they're they're in their room, they're chatting and all this stuff. Um, and there's like this music playing, and it's from one of the other girls' rooms. Um, I can't remember which one now, but it's obviously disturbing the rest of them because they're on the same floor. And it sort of cuts from Ruth and Russell who are having their issues to Debbie and just this random guy and we find out in this episode Debbie has, has been you know putting it around a little bit sort of having casual sex with, with basically everyone uh, <laughs> and so we see her with this random guy having sex on the floor and the joke I really like is actually they can hear the music and, and it sort of takes Debbie out of the mood um, and it, it, it's like this this high sort of thumping you know dance type music so then <laughs> Debbie says to the guy are you actually gyrating in time with the music which I just love so he's actually the sex movements in time with the music which is just glorious um, 
but yeah, I, I love the fact that then Debbie would pick up on that and be be so critical. And then she, we see her go and complain about the music. So I like that there's this music which kind of connects the whole floor sort of thing, the, the, these different characters, and we see them react. I, I really love connective sort of, you know, tissue like that. Um, and also I think it shows them Ruth and Russell are in a place where they're not, Kind of sex isn't on their mind because they're having these issues. Um, yeah, uh, we find out then. I mean, Ruth pops the suggestion. Well, when I get back off tour, we could maybe we can maybe look for apartments together. And Russell isn't so keen. He's 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 making excuses. He's saying. Um, <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, guys. He's making excuses that, yeah, we haven't been together that long. And and it does play in the scene that maybe Ruth is, just because she's feeling lonely or whatever the case may be, she's maybe got something on else in her head, maybe something to do with Sam then maybe she's quite desperate just to, to do this thing with Russell to, to move forward in their relationship. So it, it does feel maybe that the Ruth is, is, is rushing things. But at the same time, it, it, it feels a bit cold the way Russell, you know, sort of changes the subject and, and doesn't really indulge Ruth. But any case, so we, we see them having problems and they're, they're really not in the mood, if you like. And then it cuts to Debbie, who's very much in the mood and sleeping. So, so in the mood, in fact, they're doing it on the floor, not, not just in the bed. So Ruth and Russell go out on the shopping trip the next day. They bump into Sam at one point. There's obviously still tension with Ruth and Sam. And this is a crucial thing because obviously Sam, when when he sees them, gets gets a little bit jealous. And but it's planting that seed for later in the episode because these things come up later where where Russell accuses Ruth of always talking about Sam of taking too much of an interest and and that's part of the problem with their relationship. So they go to this camera shop and they're looking at like these new cameras and again 80s technology and how advanced they would have been for the time. And Ruth is talking about one in particular with the salesman which she likes the look of and it's just this thing with with Russell where he's um, like they have a conversation about buying the camera, <laughs> and he's 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 not so keen on it. Um, and it's just because I think it's I like it's it's not meant to be shown Ruth as superficial, just caring about money, but it's just because once he hears that price, he says, oh, okay, yeah, that is a lot of money. He has that sort of reaction. And I think Ruth is partly just messing with him because then she, she kind of goes along with it and suggests, well, maybe you should buy this camera sort of thing. So it's sort of quite a funny little scene, but again, it, it highlights the, the sort of tension between them and, and the issues that are sort of growing. And we we later get to the drag act club. So we open with the drag performer and we sort of close with her, but then we get this scene in the middle where the girls all go to this club. And what's happened is... Sheila, who of course has been to one acting class, she is reading lines from this play. <coughs> and she's bothering Sam, basically, who's trying to work. So he takes that opportunity to to get her to to read lines from his his screenplay. 
and all this ties into Ruth because there's all this. I mean, it, it sort of goes into him having this daughter and not connecting with her, which obviously is another character. But <clears throat> you know, some of the stuff sort of ties into Ruth, and it sort of Sam putting his soul out there really because obviously he's not the sort of guy to open up that much and obviously the films he's worked on have been very kind of um trashy sort of b movie type pictures <clears throat> so this screenplay seems a lot more personal and it's 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 quite quite a nice little scene it, it you know, in a way, it is Sam putting himself out there for Sheila and, and giving her some encouragement without really doing it. He's doing it in a very Sam matter-of-fact sort of way. And obviously, he's, it's it's part of an ego trip for him as well because she's freed him from his screenplay. But Ruth hears about this later on and her and Russell have just come back and originally, I think they were just going to go to their room or, or whatever. But because she hears about this thing with Sam and the she, um, screenplay, sorry, she decides to go out with um, the girls. They go to, to the, the drag bar and it's it's this um, comedy act, this drag comedy act. And again, it, really interesting time in the 80s because I think this sort of performer... Well, you know, it's sort of in its infancy. It's not the famous um, type thing now where you have a number of performers who are sort of seen as iconic. So it does stand out for this era. And obviously attitudes were very much harsher towards that kind of thing back then. So very ballsy to be doing it in this era. But they, they all go to this bar to watch the performer... And there's definitely some, like, thematic connection between the wrestlers and what they do and how wrestling is often frowned at as being, you know, all phony um, and, and just cartoonish and silly. And kind of this performer, she, you know, she in some ways is seen as an outcast, is seen as this kind of niche thing which maybe really isn't taken seriously, a, a bit like the wrestlers, but a bit like the wrestlers because of the attitude of society, she, um, it sort of takes more to put yourself out there in this way. But anyway, it leads to a number of interesting, like, interactions with the with the group because she she overhears Ruth and Sheila talking about the Sam thing and so she kind of classic stand-up thing she picks on them because they're talking during the performance so then she actually goes around the group and I think what's so good about this episode with the Russell and Ruth thing is just the fact that these little moments, they're sort of heightened and there's there's a funny side to them, but they're also, they're somewhere in the middle. They're not full-blown funny, um, but they're sort of comedic, but not too far that way neither. But it just, it's heightened enough and it highlights that there's issues with their relationship and it does pick up on certain things. Um, but look, yeah, this scene is, is sort of nicely done because, um, you know, the drag performer makes a gag about, you know, your boyfriend's here for the weekend and, and you're surrounded by by all these other girls and, you know, that guy needs sex, go and have sex. That, that's the, the gist of the sort of joke Then she's kind of shaming them into having sex which obviously they don't do, but they go off and it's all part of the joke. They sort of play up to it. And it's that idea of being embarrassed almost into doing it. So it's quite an interesting exchange. But yeah, it really puts them in the spotlight and puts their relationship in the spotlight. It's actually a clever way for the storyline to do that because then they have to confront what's going on and their emotions. And the whole thing, thing with Ruth and Russell in this episode is almost like these awkward things where 
you know, the truth is bubbling under the surface and, and they just have to confront it at some point. So in a way, this may have been as good a way as any to sort of do that. And then they have more awkward conversations and um, a couple in the foyer, um, I think in the hotel, gets Russell to um, photograph them in the middle of a fight with Ruth. But I, I do sort of like... Um, yeah, I do sort of like them. Russell is sort of put out because he's having this fight with Ruth and he's put out then then someone's asking him to kind of do his job, you know, but when he's not not do, working, if you like. But so so some really good stuff there. And also at the bar, you know, um the drag app picks up on Sheila and starts putting the spotlight on her and of course Sheila's very nervous, very a bit of an outcast like the drag act in a way. But it's this sort of sincere moment because even though it's framed as comedy and she's maybe mocking Sheila a little bit, I think she is actually being sincere because she she calls her like the most interesting person in the bar and and I think she does mean it as a compliment. I don't think she's just mocking Sheila. And Sheila's just really awkward and, and one of the other girls tells her, you know, be nice but and Sheila actually does have these these witty responses um and, and she says something like because I think she's the drag act says how how long have you been a wolf because of course that's Sheila's character and she's in a get up at the thing and she says I don't know how long have you been Barbara Streisand which which is actually a really great comeback um but yeah it's this awkward moment but it's actually quite nicely done because as I said I think the drag performer is sincere and she's taking this interest in Sheila and actually likes her look and what have you. Um, and it, it just goes to this this whole plot with Sheila in the episode where maybe if she had a bit more confidence and put herself out there, maybe something could happen with her acting career or her character or maybe you know, just expanding on, on the wrestling character is um, a good way to put yourself out there and make a name for yourself and just fit in a bit more. Um, I, I think that's the theme of the episode as well, you know, um, like trying to move forward with the artistic side and, and really pushing the boundaries and the characters and just doing something differently in the same way as you have that process working on film or maybe the drag performer has that. Maybe that's a good good idea for the wrestlers. Um, and it sort of ends, as I said, with the drag performer. And she um, she's interested in working with Bash. Because she, after the show, she comes back to Bash's hotel room. Um, and she's, she's with um, Rhonda. And there's sort of a funny little misunderstanding because she she thinks that Rhonda has taken her back and they're going to have like a freeway, um, her, Rhonda and Bash. So that's quite quite, an, quite a funny little joke. Um, but her and Bash get to talking and um, he sets up like, then he'll go down to the club and she'll perform for him. And so throughout the episode, they've been sort of looking for, for ways to add to the wrestling act. So early in the episode, Debbie, it's sort of good again to see Debbie being so proactive, a different side, because she's, she's actually thinking more practically as a businesswoman and she's been looking for like a regular referee for the show and again that that's another important element to wrestling is you know people underestimate how important a good referee is and if you think about classic wrestling referees throughout the years you actually do realise that certain referees, they stand out, just their characters, just their names. And I think just because you're just used to seeing them in the matches and, and having a certain style where they might be 
quite in the face of the wrestlers or or they just count in a certain way you actually realize them a pro wrestling referee can be an important thing to the overall product so again debbie being very professional being very almost practical saying yeah well we do need a regular referee because it you know if you have it 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 sort of solves the problem of having to keep going out and find more for individual like matches or tapings and and it's probably cuts cuts the cost a bit if you just have one regular but yeah, Bash being Bash is all pie in the sky. He, he doesn't really have any interest in Debbie's referee idea. He, he gets um, sort of swept up by this cheesy magician who, who's um, like he's waiting on them at dinner. So he's he does his little tricks, and there's this one with with like an orange where he's he's meant to be floating it. And I just love Sam's reaction because Bash is all taken with it, and Sam's deadpan reaction is it's on the string, which is just brilliant. But it's too late by then. And then um, Bash is really into it, and and he tries to push it on the other ladies, on, well on the wrestlers. Saying, you know, yeah, we could add this, we could add this to your ad. It'll be something different. And um, Debbie sort of goes along with it. I guess she's just been worn down at this point. And maybe because she is getting more in the business sort of mode, maybe she's thinking quite cynically. Yeah, you know, that could add something. That that could make money. Um, and Cherry, who of course is the trainer, isn't so keen. She just wants to focus their minds on the wrestling. But one of the girls is is starting to get into it. So I mean, that's that's another interesting point the episode brings up because at this point in the eighties, although you know there's a lot of nostalgia for for wrestling in the eighties, and people say. Yeah, 80s, 90s, it, it was much better because it was much more logical and the characters were better and the matches, you know, and, and all the rest of that. Um, I think also during that era, there's there's a lot of goofy and cheesy shit which you just wouldn't get away with now in a way. Um, I mean, you still see it sometimes now, but it's probably rarer. I, I think the problems with today's wrestling are different problems. I don't think it's that sort of issue, but it's... So, yeah, it's showing that it's a sign of the era, the fact that they would think about having magic involved in wrestling. Um, bearing in mind, wrestling at this time was less exposed than, than it is today, but... So that that's another side to it than they're sort of showing, but it, Bash is basically looking for something to add to the show, like like a gimmick sort of thing. So he's quite taken with the magic, and then I think that's what leads to his interest with the, with this drag performer. So so it sort of ends with her doing this song for him and. She thinks she's got the gig, and he he actually says no. Um, I'm not sure why he says no, unless it's just sign of the times, and he's just maybe feeling a bit awkward about working with uh, a drag performer. And I think maybe he's picked up on the signs, and she actually was quite into him and thought there was going to be something with with the three of them, with Rhonda as well. But he actually, he does give her a gig. He sort of says, you know, you can help train Rhonda. Remember Rhonda, my my wife. And she puts a brave face. Oh, that, that'd be great. And then it, it ends with a touching little scene with Sheila. Sheila's waiting by the dressing room. And she actually says, I really liked your act to... I forget forget the guy's name, but but to the drag performer... And again, we see this little bond, this little connection there, because obviously they are kind of both seen as outcasts in this era. And so it's this sweet little thing that that, that sort of um, builds with them. And 
Yes, so so that's really really good moving forward. And that's the episode. I, I think I've pretty much covered everything. And there was a scene with Debbie and Cherry where they sort of bond. Obviously, Cherry's had relationship issues, been balancing a lot. And they sort of um, smoke pot and they bond as well. But, yeah, really, really good stuff. Again, it's once again a very consistent, solid show. It does a lot of interesting things with the characters. And it, it's always moving forward with the eras and, well, the one era, but moving forward and doing different things, exploring different things. Um yeah, each episode is very consistent of this show. I mean, it doesn't necessarily always set the world alight, but it's it's those understatement, ca- understated character moments which really make the show, I think. And, you know, the main cast are all very likeable and really engages you. So so it's all great. It's, it's all great stuff. So let's go episode four of season three, Say Yes. And I'll be back with more Glow soon. And I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.